Father, we thank you for this morning. We exalt your name. We all know you. We adore you. Thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. Thank you for bringing us here again this morning to your presence to receive from your heart, to receive the goodness that you have for us. Father, we've come with an open heart this morning. Give us grace, Father. Let there be understanding. Help us this morning. Show us your heart. Show us your counsel. And cause us to receive your word with faith. And let your word transform us. Even to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Praise Jesus forevermore. Alright, so we shall continue our conversation. Financial freedom. Praise God. Financial freedom has been a great conversation so far. And we are approaching the end of the series. We are approaching the end of the series. Then we'll start another one. Glory to Jesus. It's been a good teaching so far, right? It's been amazing. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about financial freedom, how that the plan of God for us as children is a plan of prosperity that God wants us to prosper. That prosperity is God's plan for us. And we've, we've also been saying that in the kingdom, that prosperity responds to principles. That if you're going to prosper as a child of God, you have to follow the kingdom principles for prosperity. Praise Jesus. That we've been looking at different principles. Praise God. We've been looking at different principles for financial freedom. We've looked at the principle of labor. We've looked at the principle of giving. We are looking at the principle of honor. The principle of honor. And I said that even this principle of honor is given. But I decided to name it so because I consider it a sacred and, a, and an higher level of giving. Because I told you, like you need to understand, that in the kingdom, 90% of the principle for prosperity is giving. You see, in the kingdom, if you are going to prosper, you have to give. Have to give, you have to give a lot. A lot. I'm telling you, you have to give a lot. Many Christians pray more than they give, and yet they want God to prosper them. It doesn't even work that way. Because in the kingdom, prosperity does not answer to prayer, it answers to giving. You give your way to prosperity. I've been telling you several times. You don't pray your way to prosperity in the kingdom. You do what? You give your way to prosperity praise the lord so we're looking at different things under the principle of honor we've looked at we've looked at offerings give the lord an offering give the lord an offering our offering we also look at how to give the lord an offering and that was just so amazing i want to look at another another phase under this principle of honor and that's what I want to look, I want to call commitment. Can you say commitment? I can hear you say commitment. Praise Jesus forevermore. So commitment is another principle of honor in the kingdom that allows the Lord to open the door of prosperity for us. Now, what do I mean by commitment? I mean the commitment of your resources are you following me the commitment of your finances towards the achievement of a particular goal in the house of god or better put the commitment of your resources the commitment of your finances towards the development towards the project developmental project of your local assembly are you following me? Don't worry, as we go gradually, you would, you would understand very well. This is very different from your normal offerings. It's very different from your tithe. We will get it clear now as we move on. So commitment is you being 
particularly committing or putting your resources, your finances into particular projects in your local church. Developmental projects to, for the development of the church. And you see, as we go on, you'll find that even though we have taught many times, not taught like present of teach, like we have taught, think, taught, we have taught that these developmental projects, even though they appear natural, physical, we think they are just that. No, they are more than that. So many times we don't pay attention to it. But it's a very, very serious thing. Praise Jesus for the more. So, you see, commitment to developmental projects in your local church is part of, is a principle of honor for God. Let's just go gradually. Are you with me now, my friends? Praise Jesus for the more. This guy needs my respect. Amen. Don't bang the narrow battery. But it will last for one week. <laughs> Tell him where they sell original battery. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So, you need to, you have, is a must. Are you hearing my friends? For you to be committed financially, committed economically, committed with your resources to the developmental projects of your local church. Are you following me? This, what I'm saying is not profound. It's not deep. It's simple. For example, if they want to buy chairs, are you following me? To sit on those, that's a developmental project. We want to buy microphones. We want to buy speakers. We want to rent uh, a space for children church. We want to purchase this space. We want to buy keyboard and all of that. Those are what? Developmental project. Are you following me? And as simple as they sound, they are very deep. Because they go very deep into the heart of God. You see, <laughs> it's so serious to God, and you soon find out, that when you commit yourself to it, it counts it as honor for you. Are you following me now, my friends? Shout hallelujah. I'm just trying to to quickly show you what I mean by commitment as the principle of honor before I go deep into the teaching. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So you won't be confused. And what does Pastor mean by commitment? What does Pastor mean? So let me, I'm telling you already what I mean by commitment. It's not your tithe, it's not your offering. Is that we have projects to do in church. Are you following? And you are committing your resources to those projects. Are you with me now, my friends? Shout hallelujah. I'll be looking at two scriptures, but I'll major on one for us to see how this is very important to the heart of God. Are you with me? And the importance of this to the heart of God. Are you following? It's such that his presence cannot even even be in our midst if we don't commit to developmental projects. <laughs> Are you with me now, my friends? You see, the things we think we need to do as it were to ask the presence of God. Like we need to pray, Lord, fast the Lord, true. Are you following me? Because we want the presence of God. Are you with me? But there are some other things that look so simple that we can easily push aside. That they are very important to attract and house God's presence now. Are you following my friends? You see, you know I never come here to teach you what is not in the scripture, what is not true. I teach you what is true. And I pray and hope that you are going to practice it. Praise the Lord forevermore. You see, developmental projects of your local church or of a local church are you following me it's very crucial to the to the housing of god praise the lord it's very crucial to the attraction of god's presence that you see if god's presence will tabernacle with us praise the lord 
that if the presence of God will tabernacle with us, one of the things we must we must do, are you following me, is that we must commit to developmental projects. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. We must do what? Commit to what? Developmental projects. Can I tell you one truth? Any church that is not developing, are you hearing my friends? Okay, let me please say it before I say what I want to say. Why are you not make a mistake? That a church is developing in the natural. Are you following me? That a church is, is, is undergoing developmental projects, developing in the natural, in the structures, material things. Are you following me? Is not a proof. Are you following me? Or is not, is not a proof and is not the proof that they are developing spiritually. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you hearing me? That a church is developing physically, that a local assembly is developing naturally, is not a proof and is not the proof that they are developing spiritually. Is not a proof that God's presence is there. Are you with me now, my friends? I, is that fine? Am I good already? But you see, a church that is not developing in the natural, a church that is not developing physically, a church that is not developing in terms of projects, are you following my friends? Is also not growing spiritually. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm, I'm serious about what I'm saying. I'm serious. A church that is not developing physically, developing naturally. Are you hearing me? I'm, I'm not even necessarily talking about numbers now. Because numbers actually, don't, even though I want to say this, and it's true, it doesn't, it doesn't remove, it doesn't take away your responsibility to invite people to church and preach to people about Jesus. Are you hearing me? But actually numbers, are you hearing me, which is the harvest, is actually the work of God. Are you following? It's God that brings it. But you see, not without you planting and sowing. Not without you working hard as members. Are you hearing me? Because Paul plants, Apollos waters, God gives what? The increase. So increase, numerical increase, increase as it were, belongs to God. Are you following me? But not, but not without our hard work. Not without our inviting people, not without our preaching to people, we have to, 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 to plant and water if God will bring increase. Are you hearing me, my friends? Praise God. I think that's fine already. So, a child that is not growing physically, that is not developing physically, now, having said what I've said, not necessarily in terms of numbers, because a lot of the times, except you want to use your own method, a lot of the times you can't control that. You only do what you have to do. You do your best. You do the things, the right things you have to do. You don't have to wait for God. Are you following me? The only way you can affect the numbers of a church by yourself. Are you following me? That you can determine that, okay, by next three months, 100 people are coming to this church. It's because you have a method, a natural method that you want to use. Are you following me? You have, a, you, you have a plan. You have a business plan that you want to follow. Are you following me? For example, I can't tell you exactly when this church will reach 100 people. I don't know. I don't know. But we are going to keep working as if we want to go five, we want 500 people next week. Are you following me? We are going to keep working as, as though we are expecting 500 people when next week. But I can't assure you that in the next five months that we are going to have more, we are going to have 100 people. I don't know. It's not my work. It's not your work. What's our work? To labor. Are you following me? To work hard, to invite the people, to preach to the people, but it's the work of God to what? To hurt them. Is that okay now? Is that fine? So, by or apart from the numbers, are you, are you hearing me now, my friend? Any church that is not developing physically in the natural is also not growing spiritually. It's not growing, I'm telling you, it's not growing spiritually. 
Are you following? That the microphone has been troubling them for the past one year, or the past two years that they started. And they cannot buy another one microphone. That church is not going spiritually. I'm telling you the truth. Are you with me now, my friends? Are you following me? That the way you, you, the, when you first entered the church, when it started, after one year, after two years, the way it was, in terms of physical projects, in terms of natural development, are you hearing me? Now that that's the way it is still now. I'm telling you the truth, that church is not going spiritually. Are you hearing me now, my friends? Are you hearing me? If the church is not what? It's not going spiritually. That church is not going spiritually. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Because you see, and if the church is not going spiritually, it can't ask the presence of God the way it should. And I'm telling you the truth that developmental projects are very crucial to the housing of God's presence. Are you following? You see, if it's one mic we're able to buy after one year, are you following me of starting? We're able to buy one mic. Are you with me? There's a level of presence that is attracted because it's a development. Are you following me? After a while again, we're able to buy projector. Are you following me? I'm telling you the truth. Is a what? Is a development. Can you hear me, my friends? There's a level of growth what it attracts. Every old oh, friend, you see, oh, you people need to understand this thing. That is why worldly people can spend a lot of money into the developmental projects. Are you following me? Are you following me? People pushing worldly agendas, are you with me? Can spend what? A lot of money into what? on what? Developmental projects. Why? Because physical monuments, hey friends, can you hear me? Are you hearing me, my friends? Physical monuments are important for the accommodation of spirits. <laughs> friends, can you hear me? Physical what? Physical monuments are what? Are important for what? The accommodation of spirits. That's why a man can put down a stone and is worshipping the stone, pouring oil on it. Are you following me? And spirits can attach themselves to that stone. Are you following me? And it's actually, this one is responding to him. Are you following me? You see, the reason why Satan wants the church poor and which he has filled on is because he doesn't want us to have glory. Are you following me? You see, and one of the ways to break out of that poverty that Satan wants to put us in as a church is to give us a church so that we can grow in developmental projects so that we can attract the glory of God. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? <laughs> Friends, spirits are attached to fiscal monuments. Are you hearing me now, my friends? Why did they build Fela Shrine? Because the spirit of what? Of drug, of those things. You understand? It has to tabernacle. You understand? It needs a place to stay. Are you following me? It's not, it's not just going to be in the air. It needs an accommodation. Of course, eventually it will live in people. Are you following me? But it needs a base from which it can move out. It needs a base. It needs an, opera- a, an, an operating station. Are you hearing my friends? Why did I build a lot of motels and all of that? Because the spirit of prostitution, are you following me? Needs accommodation. Oh, friends, are you with me? Why are they angry with us when we are building large, large auditoriums? Is it that is putting the anger in them? Are you hearing me? Because he knows that our developmental project, are you following me, is an attraction of the glory of God. It brings down God's presence. And he doesn't want presence to feel, he doesn't want God's presence to feel the earth. He doesn't want God's glory to feel the earth. So he, he tries to ensure that the church does not undergo developmental projects. Are you following me? And many foolish Christians too, they, they say, hey, see the church, how can they use 
10 billion naira. Then how can it's 100 billion to build an auditorium? Hey, when the poor people are there, you don't even know what you're talking about. How are we going to deliver the poor people from their poverty if we don't have God's presence? Are you hearing me? Or you think, you think it's by giving people money, money that you deliver them from poverty? No. Friends, can you hear me? You don't deliver people from poverty by giving them money. Are you with me? It is presence and glory that delivers people from poverty. Can you hear me, my friends? It is what? It is presence and glory that delivers people from what? From poverty. And for us to have the presence and the glory of God, we need developmental projects. Are you following? He was, he was looking in our guy. He said, build the house and now we fill it with what? With glory. Look at it, Agai. If I go to our main scripture, that's Agai. I think chapter, is it chapter? Is it chapter one? Praise the Lord. It, it started from chapter one, actually. But let me, let, me, let me quickly move to where I want. Go to chapter two. Agai chapter 2. Is it chapter 2? I build this house and I will fill it with glory. Can you look for it for me? Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. But anyway, the story started from chapter 1. Are you following me? When God was speaking to the children of Israel to start building what? The temple again. Are you following me, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. If you look at verse 4, is, is it chapter, chapter 1 from verse 4? Is it time for you, you to dwell in your sealed houses and the house lying waste? And this house lying... In fact, let's read it. Let's read it from verse 1. Agai chapter 1 from verse 1. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Joseph the high priest, saying, Thus, thus speaketh the Lord of all, saying, These people say the time is not come. These people say the time is not come. The time that the lost house should be built. The time that what? The lost house should be what? That's talking of the church, the temple, the tabernacle. So God had to send them a prophet that you are saying it's not time to build my house. You don't know what you are. <laughs> you don't know what you are doing. You are saying it's not your time to embark on developmental projects in this local church, in this house of God, in this assembly. He said you don't know what you are rubbing yourself off. You are rubbing yourself off the glory of God. You are robbing yourself of the presence of God. That you are not engaging in the, develop, in the development of the house of God. Are you following? Is a direct robbery of your church of the glory of God. Are you following me now, my friends? I won't read chapter, everything in chapter 1. I'll, I'll, I'll run to chapter 2 soon. But let's read verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Agai the prophet, saying... Is it time for you or you to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lies in waste. Like this temple is still like this. This house is not developing. This church is not developing. This local assembly is not developing. We can't see any physical development. Are you hearing me? Now therefore, thus said the Lord, consider your ways. Praise Jesus forevermore. Consider your ways. Go to verse 7. Oh, let me read verse 6. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe, but there is none warm. And he that ended wages, ended wages to put it into a bag with holes. Can you see? So, because they are not committed to the building of God's house, poverty has crept on, has crept up on them. Oh, are you hearing me? That the reason for these people's poverty is not the attack of Satan. Can you hear me? That, are you hearing me? That what? That the reason for these people's poverty is not what? 
It's not the attack of Satan, no. It is that what they have left God's house undeveloped. Oh, this is a very beautiful teacher. Are you hearing, my friends? They have left what? Can you see? He's saying you are laboring, you are working so hard. You are not earning, and you are earning. As if you are putting inside old. He said, consider your ways. He said, that the reason for you, don't go and start fasting and praying that God, go, 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 general. Everything that's making me work and noise. He, he said, no, 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 no. Consider your ways. That the reason why you are experiencing poverty individually and as a church is because you are not committed to building this church. Because you are not committed to building my house. You are not committed to the development of this tabernacle. So imagine how not being committed to the development of God's church, imagine how it opens the door for poverty. Are you following? So imagine how the, the, our commitment to the development of the church will bring prosperity to us. Are you hearing my friend? You see, why and how can non commitment to the development of the local church why can it introduce poverty to our lives it is because are you hearing me it is because the development of god's church of the local church are you following me it is because it is it is it is it is an honor to god are you following me and it does attract the glory of god are you with me? It attracts the presence of God. And when the presence and the glory of God comes, men can be delivered from their poverty. Are you following me now, my friends? Men can be what? Delivered from their poverty. Verse 7. Don't say the Lord of us, consider your ways. <laughs> can you consider your ways? Don't forget, don't spiritualize this thing. What are they talking about there? The what? The development, the building of what? Of the house of God. Don't spiritualize. He's not talking of fasting and prayer. He's not talking of evangelism. He's talking about the development of the house of God. He's talking about the, 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 the progress in the natural of the house of God. He said, if you want your poverty to go, better consider your ways on this matter. <laughs> Are you hearing me? No, we are talking about our financial freedom. And committed is what is what is the principle of honor. Are you hearing me? Look at it, verse 8. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. Oh, friends, can you hear me? Do what? Go up to the mountain and bring wood and what? And build the house. And do what? And build the house. And build the house. Develop my house. Are you, are you following me? Get a new keyboard. Get new microphones. Get new speakers. This your microphone is make, it's making noise. Get new speakers. You following? Buy properties. Are you following, my friend? Get good sound equipment. Get. Go, go and develop the house. Go and build the house. Oh, friends, I know you have not, you have not seen, you have never seen this scripture as so, as so deep. It's deep. It is deep. And it has an influence on your prosperity. So you, you've seen it yourself. We are reading it together. Are you following me? This, the development, your commitment to the development of God's house, of your local church, has an impact on your what? On your prosperity. It determines whether you prosper or not. Tell you the truth. Want to buy a microphone? Your one era is not there. Want to buy a chair? Your one era is not there. Want to pay for children's church? Your one era is not there. You are tying up poverty for yourself. <laughs> no, nobody will force you. No, it's not. You will still see it. It's willingly. You give it willingly. It's not by force. Pastor will never come to your house. Pastor will not talk. Now you, you have not given. God forbid. It's not even in this church. Why have you not given? You have never given. I will not It's willingly. Are you following me? But you see, when you are not committed to the development of your local church, you are piling up poverty for yourself. Are you following me? And when a local church itself 
is not committed to, to what? To its physical development. It is what? It is housing poverty. Are you following my friends? Are you following my friends? Even if it's, if, even if it's, if it's, if it's a drone that you can buy, that you can save money or whatever to buy in a year, buy it. Every time, let us see that the church has moved forward developmentally. Every time, every time we come, that something that oh something has been added. Even if it's one thing, if it's a clock, if it, let let it be developing. Hey, we are we are accumulating glory. I'm telling you the truth, my friends. Ah, we are accumulating what? Glory. See the things that allow for glory in the kingdom, that allows for the presence of God. They are as simple as anything. That's why we, we easily miss them. We easily miss them. The things that allow for glory, for presence, for prosperity, they are very simple, very cheap. But you are looking for the hard one. You are looking for them to tell you to go and buy, to go and buy goat and kill and, and sacrifice to God. You are looking for a problem that will say, okay, just bring 50k and I'll pray for you for seven days. I know your problem will be gone. Your problem will not be gone, it will multiply. Your, your pastor today that, okay, come, this is your poverty, the way to go. I want to give you fasting of 40 days. 40 days. Go and fast of 40 days. It will not go. It will not go. Go and fast for 40 days. You won't fast for 40 days for your poverty to go. You won't fast for 40 days. You will give for long. And one of the giving is the what? Is the honor of your commitment to the development of your church. I'm telling you the truth. In this church, we have never forced anybody to give one error. We have never forced anybody to give one error. But people who have been given have been given to the, de- to the development of the church. And we've seen the results. We have seen the results. We are getting blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed. See as I'm shining. <laughs> are you following me? Are you following my friends? We have seen the results. Hey, and we are now entering. Don't, 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 don't open my eyes to see, my eyes to see that those who are giving are coming to another level of financial financial prosperity i'm telling you the truth i'm not lying to you. i'm not lying to you that those who are committed to the, to the development of this church are coming to another level of of what of financial prosperity because there is more demand on us for more development are you with me there's an higher demand on us for what for more development so more money is coming i'm telling you the truth that's what the lord told me that's what he showed me in my heart and it's giving us the privilege, it's creating the space. The space for us to come into more blessing. And how do you come into more blessing? More giving. Are you following? Praise Jesus. So if you're not if you're not, if you're not committed to the development of the of the of this house, I, I am begging you. Not like begging you, like please, please, no. Like please help us. If you don't give, the church will not grow. No, we have been growing. I'm begging for your own sake. I'm begging for the sake of your of your destiny, of your prosperity. Give. Be committed. Let your money be in the projector. Let your money be in the microphone. Let your money be in the laptop. Let your money be in the in everything. Let your money be there. Put your money where your mouth is. Like as not pastor, we always say, put your money where where your mouth is. This is the reason why you have been why God is providing for you is this church. And I'm telling you the truth. Is the reason why God is protecting you. Is the, the reason why God is helping you. Is the reason. Praise Jesus, everyone. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure. I will do what? I will take pleasure in it. I will take pleasure in what? In it, in the house. In the house, in the building of the house. In the development of the house. You see, I thought that God would say we will take pleasure in our many spiritual exercises. Are you following me? But he says what? He will take pleasure in the development of his house. Oh friends, can you hear me now my friends? See, don't stop looking for what is not lost. To be blessed is simple, it's so easy. To prosper is so easy, it's not hard. God says, I will take pleasure in the development of my church. 
of your local assembly. That is, the day we get a new keyboard, God does what? God is pleased. You understand? He has pleasure. When we got this drum set, oh, he was so glad that, wow, these guys, they, 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 this is another development. When, 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 when we got the mic stands, wow, this is another development. It doesn't matter if it's sold for 5,000. Are you hearing me? It doesn't matter if it's 500 naira. That something new is being added. Every time. Are you following me? God has pleasure in it. Are you following me? Do you know why? I, I made a very serious statement, which is, which I'm very, I'm saying with 100%. That any church that is not developing physically, naturally, apart from numbers, which we can't influence. Are you following me? It's not brain spiritually. Why? Because whatever is not developing is dying. Are you following my friends? Whatever is what? Hey. Whatever is not developing is what? Is dying. Even biology teaches us. Is that not true? Huh? Characteristics of living things. Mr. Niger, what? That. The GDS or what? It's for growth. So that means if you are not growing, you are not living. Why can these pupils not grow? Tell me. It's not living, it's not alive. So, a sign of life is growth. Mm, friends, can you hear me? A sign of life is development. It's development. So, one crucial sign that a church is growing spiritually is that it is developing physically. It's not where we left it a year ago. It's not where we left it two years ago. No, it's not, it has left them. It has, it has left them. People can come and say, wah, ah, ah. People who came to church maybe two months ago, or three months ago, or four months ago, when they come and say, ah, ah, ah. They have to be seen it. <laughs> See now, we have extended. We now have children church in the other building. That is development. Because we are going spiritually. Are you following me? Praise God forevermore. Very soon, it, it will, you know, everyone will not be able to take us again. You see, and you see the way we the way we think in this church. We are not waiting to buy properties or get places when the number is already too much. You know, you know, since we we we, we, we plan to get that place, how many children were in children church? But we look, we have to develop, and we are looking at we are going to grow. So let's get it. You see, if the money comes today, we will buy this place today, even though we have this number. Why should we wait till it fills up before we buy it? Is that, the, is that the determinant? No. Are you following my friends? Praise Jesus over more. So, development is a sign of life. I'm telling you the truth. It's a sign of life. So if a church is not developing, life is not there. It's not growing. It's not growing. I'm telling you it's not growing. Go to a church, all the bench, the, the chairs, they are torn, they are tattered. The speakers are bent. Every, that church is dead or is dying spiritually. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying to you. I'm not lying to you. There's no life. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. And I will take pleasure in it and I'll be glorified. See it, the Lord. See it, the Lord. Let me jump to chapter 2. Chapter 2. Go to verse. Let's go to verse. Verse 7. And I will shake all nations. And the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house. With what? With what? With glory. Oh, friends, I'm telling you, without developmental projects, without physical monuments, a church cannot house the glory of God. And I will do what? And I will fill this house with glory. He didn't say I will fill your heart with glory. He didn't say I will fill you with glory. I will fill this house with glory. Say the Lord of us. So, imagine that the house is not built. 
You know that that church has lost out on the glory of God. You understand? Because what God wants to fill with glory is what? This house. Are you following me? What does God want to fill with glory? This house. But before he fills with glory, he said, build it. Develop it. Are you following me? So you see that unless this house is built, that church cannot accommodate the glory of God. Are you following me? So you see that the development of the local church, are you following me, is an attraction of divine glory. Oh, friends, can you hear me? The what? The development of what? Of a local church, the physical development. It attracts divine glory. It accumulates glory for us. You then we get a new mic, you then we get a new chair, you get, there is there that there are accumulations of glory. Sorry. Praise Jesus. They are what? The accumulation of glory. Every time we add something to the church that develops the church, that, that develops the house of God, we are doing what? We are accumulating glory. Because without developmental projects in the local church, there cannot be an accumulation of glory. Forget it. To like go and do all the fast. Go and do all the fast. There cannot be an accumulation of glory. Are you hearing me now, my friends? There can't be what? An accumulation of glory. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So we see, I'm not trying to lay a foundation because this place we're going to in this, in this teaching, in this part of honor, is very, very important, very crucial. But we must see the way God sees it. But we say we want to buy a keyboard, you just think church wants to buy a keyboard. No, we are saying we want to pile up another level of glory. We're not just buying a keyboard. We want another level of presence. We also want to buy another microphone. It's not just that, you know, it's not just something that is making sound. It's that we, are, we want to attract more presence. We want to attract more glory. Are you hearing me now, my friends? Are you blessed already? Praise Jesus. So you see, if a local church is going to attract Accumulate and accommodate God's presence and His glory. We must commit to developmental projects. Are you following me? So that's why I'm talking about the principle of commitment. This has to do particularly with projects, developmental projects. Your offering does not have to do with projects, it's not project. Your offering is your offering. Are you following? Appreciation of God. You understand? Even though this commitment is a kind of offering. Are you following me? But it's a commitment offering, as it were. The offering is appreciation to God every time you come to church and all of that. Or anytime you receive money, money comes to your account. Your tithe is not a developmental project, as it were. Are you following me? If, if you are going to follow the Bible very well, your tithe is even, is even for so that they can be full in the house of God. <laughs> are you following me? Praise Jesus. Developmental project has its own money. Are you following me? In, in the headquarters, for example, when, when we're, we're going to buy that project, you know, the, the headquarters facility, when plans were being made to, to purchase it, are you following me? Were, were we not giving tithe and offering before? We were, right? But when it was time to purchase it, what, what the senior pastor said? They made an offering card, right? For everyone that wants to commit. And they didn't force anybody. Now, if you want to commit, I think at least 10,000 euros per person. Are you with me? You are not aware. Oh, you are not aware. Praise God. You, you are not in that service. But you are aware. And you are aware of it. Praise God. So, there has to be a commitment offering that want to purchase this property. So if you are going to give at least 10,000 euros every month for the next, I think for the next one year or so, commitment. Offerings are becoming in yes. Ties are becoming in yes. Seeds are coming in. But this is a developmental project. This is another this is a project, a particular project on ground. Are you hearing me? So who wants to commit?
from mixed to the giving to giving to this project. Recently, again, I've seen a pastor raise 30 million. I know one day we'll raise 1 billion. <laughs> Are you following me? Because we have to develop what? The house of God. Are you with me? We have to do what? We have to develop the house of God. It's very important. It's crucial to the accommodation of glory. Oh, friends, can you hear me? It's crucial to what? To the accommodation of glory. Can we start now? Don't worry, even though I say, can we start now? It doesn't mean I'm going to close late. I mean, can I really go to my scripture? And let me find a good place to tie it. And I'll pick it up next week by God's grace. Go to the book of Exodus. Chapter 25. From verse 1. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 9. Exodus chapter 25. We'll read from verse 1 to 9. Then we'll run again to Exodus chapter 36, verse 1 to 7. We'll now come back to Exodus chapter 25 and begin to establish one or two things. So can we read? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. Now this offering is not the usual offering. It's not blessing time, offering time. You understand what I'm trying to say to you? Huh? It's not the usual offering. Is the is an offering that is targeted towards what the achievement of a particular project. It's an, it's an offering that is targeted towards the development of the church, of that local church. Are you following me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man. Look at it. Of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. You understand? You see why we never force you to give money for, for Mike? <laughs> you understand? Because the reason why we are giving money is to, the reason why I want to buy the mic is to ask glory. Hmm? So anyone that will, that will, the kind of giving that will purchase the mic that will ask glory must be done willingly with the heart. Are you following me? That I will never force anybody or whine anybody to give to, to, for the development of the church. Because if you give like that, you will spoil the glory that should come. Are you following my friends? So we just come here and announce that, oh, church wants to get a drum set. Church wants to get a keyboard. It is so, 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 so amount. I'm a, I want you to give to you whatever you want. You can give. Give to it. Come out and give. That's the account. Whenever you want to give and all of that. That's what we do, right? Don't say, if you don't give, God will punish you. Go, go. <laughs> if you don't give, God will make things start for you. No, <laughs> no, it's not true. God will not punish you. Not make it time for you. But you know, he won't, won't, won't give you his prosperity. You understand? He won't give you what is prosperity. I know if I say you won't prosper, it, it will look like a curse. As I said in another way. But what I'm saying is that you will not prosper. It's not a curse. <laughs> you understand? Tell you the truth. God won't curse you. It's just that he won't bless you. <laughs> you know that? You will be, be neutral. <laughs> May you, may you not be neutral in life. You know, a, a, a neutral person can attract anything. Oh, don't worry about that one. Praise the Lord. So, of every man that gives it willingly with his heart, he shall take my offering. Uh-huh. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them. This is very, very instructive. This is so clear. See, see, see. Oh, my Jesus. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them. Very clear, very precise, because there's something we want to. It's a project. You will find at the end, at that verse 9, we wanted to build a tab- tabernacle. So, this is the offering, therefore. We want a keyboard, it is 750,000 naira. You understand? We are precise. Do you get? We want to buy a keyboard, it is what? The price is what? 750,000 naira. Whatever you want to give to it, come and give. The, when we find out that, okay, oh, the money is not yet complete. We have raised 500,000 naira now. It still remains 250,000. Come and give more. We've not given enough. Okay, the money is now 650. It remains 100. Okay, the money is now 700. It remains 50. Okay, it's complete now. You understand? This is the gift you must take. Are you following me? This is the offering you shall take. Can you hear me now? Precise. Why, why can this kind of offering be precise? Because what? There's a particular project. You understand? When, when we're banking the 
the extension for children church we said this is the amount ah, is it is clear you understand there's a particular project on ground that's why this kind of offering you can say this is the offering this is the offering your normal offering i can't say this is how much you give i can't say this is the offering that today oh, as one to collect offerings offering time and your offering has to be 10k no you, you get what i'm trying to say but i can say we're about to buy this pro- property 30 million and this is the offering it's 30 million so now come and start giving it's precise so i'm trying to show you commitment offering are you following me commitment offering is precise is is specific it is deliberate are you following me are you following me because it is directed towards a particular project can you hear me now my friends and this is the offering which he shall take of them gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shitting wood oil for the light spices for anointing oil and for sweet incense only stones and stones to be set in the effort and in the breastplate and let them make me please look at it clearly and let them do it and let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them and let them do what so all the offerings we are collecting in this passage what do you want you to do want you to build a sanctuary oh friends can you hear me you, you understand all the offering we're collecting in this scripture what do you to do what is there's a particular now when we build a sanctuary here is that a development for the church or not is, is it a development the development because the people did not have a sanctuary are you hearing me they didn't have a sanctuary before so god says okay build me a sanctuary now. that's a development are you hearing me so commitment offering is targeted at a particular developmental project in a local assembly are you hearing me now? are you hearing my friends and let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them we'll come back here we'll come back here let them make me a sanctuary there's a particular cause are you following me? so this is like saying go back go back there this is like saying let them buy me the property are you hearing me it's like saying what let them buy me what the property let them build me uh, a cathedral let them buy me a new keyboard let them buy me drum sets let them buy me new microphones let them buy me new chairs let them buy me tvs let them, you, get, you get what i'm trying to say do you understand what i'm trying to say and those kind of things god says tell them to bring an offering as a commitment offering are you understanding what i mean by commitment now are you are you getting me so that's what a commitment offering i have verse nine according to another should be after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof people so shall you make it go to chapter we have to come back here. go to chapter 36 from verse 1 to 7. then wrote bezalel and aolia and every wise hearted man in whom the lord has in whom the lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that lord had commanded and moses called bezalel and aolia and every wise hearted man in whose heart the lord had put wisdom even everyone whose heart steady up to come out of the work to do it please if you are not participating in the work of the local assembly you are not serious you don't know what you are doing no. tell you the truth you are not part you are not participating in the work and everyone was asking them to come onto the work now they are they are given here yeah, are you following me i'm not talking of being part of the work are you following me you are part of the work see i don't know i don't know how you be in a church as a christian you are not part of the work it's abnormal You are in a family, you have a house, you have a family, you have a son grown up, you have a daughter grown up, people come to live with you, 
and they are not participating in the family. They don't sweep, they don't wash plates, they don't. They just sleep and wake up and eat. Sleep, wake up, eat and go out. What will you do? We, we are, can your children try that, try that with you? They can they even think of doing it? They can't think of doing it. Your children can change it. No, children can't think of behaving like that in the house. Because why? See, see, see. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The families have seen and have stayed and have. You understand? And people have seen. I'm not sure. This is it. As the child grows up and matures in age, are you hearing me? I'm not sure there was a day where they when they sat this a child down at a particular age that you see as a child of this house. You have to be doing work in the household. You are a child. You are part of this family. Oh, call it magic, oh, my oh, my daddy. You have to do work. You have to do work. You have to wash plates or sweep. You have to do work. How many of you here did your parents ever call you that? You grew up for like ten. When, when you were up to five, even my children that are like that are three plus and one plus, they are already doing some work. Sometimes water upon the floor. They borrow a gun and bring them up. So they will bring them up. Sometimes we tell them. Sometimes we don't tell them. No, they won't fight over the mob. We didn't see them now to teach to give them special lessons. How many of you are grown up? That you were grown up. Maybe you now got to seven or eight. You already had sense. Your parents and they've seen that you're always sleeping, wake up, eat, go out. Sleep, wake up, eat, go out. You don't do anything else. Your parents now call you. They now have to they have to sit you down and give you special lecture. Now you see, you're a member of this family, you are a child in this family. You have to be part of the work. How many of you? I'm serious. How many of you? None. You grew up in the family taking up what? Responsibilities. Is that true? You grew up working in the family. You grew up working for the family. Is that true? It's like, it's a not, it's like when you're actually part of the family, it's like one of the proofs is that you are naturally involved in that family. Are you following? Without any special lesson. Are you hearing me? It, it, it happens, nobody teaches you. It happens naturally. When your parents want to deal with you, when maybe your mommy wants to insult you, that you see you are lazy and all of that. It's not because you don't, you don't work at all. Because you, it's because she feels you don't work enough. Are you following me? Because she feels you don't work as hard as others. Not because you are not doing anything at all. So, in your biological family, you just grew up taking up responsibilities. Are you hearing that, my friends? Are you hearing me? The only reason why you why they not let you do any work in the house is that you are sick. Are you are you with me? You are what? You are sick. So you see, when you're in a local church and you are not participating in the work of that house, I've left giving. I've picked the from giving to the development because yeah, they've given. People are now working to get the job done. Are you following me? When you're in a local church and you are not participating in the work that they are doing in that house, are you following me? What you are saying is that you are not part of their family. I'm telling you the truth. You are not part. You are just attending. You are, I'm telling you the truth. You can be there for 10 years. You are not part. Because if you are part of the family, you will work. You will work. You will be part of the how do we how do we sweep the floor? How do we arrange the church? How do we get this? How do we, how do we get church set up for service? I'm telling you the truth. You can be there for 10 years if you're not part of the work. You are not doing the work. Friends, you are not part. All you are saying directly, it's not even indirect, is that I'm not part of what? This family. I'm not part of this family. Are you following my friends? Because if you are part of the if you are part of a family, you will naturally what? Participate in the work. Are you hearing my friends? Are you hearing my friends? If you are part of what? A family what? You naturally what? Participate in the, in the work. So one of your one of the one of the proofs of your membership in a local church is what is your participation in the work. Can you hear me now, my friends? Can you hear me? One of what? One of the proofs of your membership of a local church or in a, or in a local church is your what? Is your participation in the work. I'm serious. How do we set up the chairs? How do we do it? For example, yesterday some people went to the market because of Children's Day. So they went to the market, they got stuff and all that. So they were cooking, they made the drink, 
So when people had come to the house as early as six this morning to, to, to finalize the cooking. Those are they are saying I'm part of this family. It's my responsibility. Are you hearing me? So people went to church yesterday to clean. To clean the church, to arrange church. Watch the toilet, do everything. So book, are you following me? And they be doing it like that. So people come every Wednesday to set up for Thursday. Are you hearing me? Praise God. So one of the proofs of your membership in the local church is that you are, you are participating in the work. I have to be natural with you. Because in your, in your, in your biological family, it is natural. And I've, I've told you, the only reason why they, why they were exempt you from work in your house is that you are sick. <laughs> no, you are sick. You are sick physically. Do you know, do you know the impl- 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 implication of that? When you are in a local church and you are not participating in the work, it simply means you are sick. No, you are sick spiritually. You are sick. You are not LD. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh-uh. If you are LD, if you are LD in your, in your, in your biological family, if you are LD in your biological family, and everybody is working and you're not working. You, you know your mommy can land you slap. <laughs> she can land you slap. By the way, all those Yoruba parents. She can land you real or slap. Ah, everybody is working. Ah, you are not working. So, Eru, Eru, and you could go in your buy. Eru, can land you real slap. But when you are sick, are you following me? When you, when, you, when you even want to try to carry the plate to the kitchen, the one you used to eat to, you say, man, worry. Food cannot be, be around here. Yeah, we'll around here. Yeah. See, when you're, lo- when, when you're in a local church and you're not working, around here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. No, it's the truth. It's, uh-uh. it's not true. It's the truth. When you're in a local church and you're not working, you're not part of the work, you're not cleaning the chair, you're not in sanitation, you're not, you're not, you're not part of the work, you just come like a moron. They've cleaned chair for you. You vary for you like a robot. You sit down. You carry yourself and go. You share grace. You are what? You are sick. And that's why we are leaving you alone. Because in the house too, when our brother is sick, you leave me alone. When it does not work, you don't let him carry his plates. Are you following me? We, we hope that we will recover soon. Because we are, we are tired of being in work alone. <laughs> I mean, you get that. You are better quickly you you quick get, get well. Mommy, <laughs> uh, Mommy, she's fine already. She just pretend, uh, only me worship place all these days. She's fine. Then come back on my wash plate. Mommy say, So I'm telling you the truth. When you're, lo- you're, in, a, when you're in a local church and you're not involved in the work, you are a sick Christian. You are not normal. You are not normal. You are not LDO. See, these are, they are very simple things to measure your spiritual health. One of the ways to measure your spiritual health as a Christian is your participation in the work of the local church. If you are not participating in the work, you are sick. It's as simple as that. You are what? You are sick. It's not normal. Because it's also abnormal. It's not normal to be in a biological family and not participate in the work. You might not eat because you didn't wash this. They might not give you food as a punishment. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you the truth. We grew up in families now. As, as, as if your family is, is dysfunctional. Are you following me? So you have to overcome your sickness. To overcome your sickness. Steer him to work. And everyone wants to steer him to work. Let your heart steer you to come onto the work. Come is it, a sign of spiritual health. I follow him now, my friend. Praise Jesus forevermore. So continue. We're talking about commitment. Commitment offering. And they received of Moses all the offering. So you see, they are giving the offering. They now want to start doing the work. We the children of Israel are brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it with us. Don't forget here, there's something to achieve. It's the building of what? Of the sanctuary. It's a project. An mental project. And they were given to us commitment. To make it clear, and they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Oh, my friends, they brought him what? Free offerings every morning. They kept bringing offerings for what? For what? For what? For the building of the sanctuary. 
that until we finish building this house, we'll keep, we'll keep giving. Pastor says, want to buy a keyboard, it's one million naira. Until we see the keyboard there, that means the money is not yet complete. You understand? Uh-uh. We gave, uh-uh, Pastor, you've told us in six months ago that I want to buy a keyboard, and some of us gave. But we've not yet seen the keyboard. What does it mean? The money is not yet complete. So we'll keep giving. They, they brought here doing free offerings every morning. That until we accomplish this work, until we are sure that the money is complete, we'll keep giving. Commitment to the development of that church. Are you following? Guys, we have to commit to we have to be committed to keep giving until we are until we develop our church, our local church. Are you following me? Until we achieve until we I, I, I achieve specific projects that we set out to do. I follow me now, my friends. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. Okay, why is this thing making sound? The light is low. Okay. Praise the Lord. And put on that fan now. Praise the living Jesus. Verse. For. And all the wise men hey, <laughs> that trot all that trot all the work of the sanctuary. You see, again, participation in the work of the local church is a proof that you are wise. Are you following me? Is a proof that what? That you are wise. Is a proof that you are wise. If you are a believer, a member of the local church, you say you are a member. And you are not participating in the work of that church. You are not wise. You are foolish. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So you see, one way you can prove your wisdom in the local church is your level of participation in the work. Let me go to my point. And all the wise men that wrote on the work of the sanctuary came every man, came every man from his work, which they made. Uh huh. And they spake unto Moses, Yea, ito. Don't forget, we are talking of commitment offering towards the development of your local church, of the church of the sanctuary. And they speak unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work. Wow! Are you following me now, my friends? What you Lord, Lord commanded to make? The people what? Bring much more. Bring much more. Bring. Oh, not bring enough. Oh. Not more than enough, oh. much more than enough. They were so committed to the giving. They were so committed to giving to the to the development of that church that they gave, they overgave. That they did what? They overgave. Now the people receiving the office came to Moses. Moses, ah, these people are bringing too much. Oh. Let me explain what this means to you in terms you understand. So John says, we want to raise thirty million naira to buy a property. And the accountants are reporting that pastor, <laughs> people over giving, we already have 300 million around for this property. We already have 300 million. You understand, you understand what I'm trying to say? And at that stage, let me explain, because it's a developmental project, hmm? let me explain to you this kind of offer. Because it is a developmental project, a commitment to a developmental project, when we've attained our aim, we stop. We tell the people to stop giving. That's the way, that's the way it should be. Are you following me? If you want to raise 30 million, are you following me? And we've raised 30 million, or because the people are giving so much, we've overraised, we've raised 300 million. We won't return the remaining. We need to do other things. But we have to let, the moment we, are, we find, find, find out that we've achieved our goal, we've raised 30 million, or when we are finding out we've raised, the, we've raised 300 million, instead of 30 million, are you following me? We have to immediately tell the people that, oh, guys, you have done so much. But as they up to, in fact, we plan to raise 30 million. People gave so much that we even raised 300 million. So, guys, please stop giving to all this project. We've had enough. No, that's, the way, that's the way it is. I'm telling you the truth. It also builds trust. And it gives the people energy to give more for another project. Because they know that what? This is accountability. Are you hearing me now, my friend? This is accountability. We're not chopping your money, huh? Joe, in money. That means you'll have a race. But by the time we asked the accountant to give a report, or by the time the accountant came to report, he said, Pastor, it's already 50 million. It's already 300 million. Pastor says, 
Some are bamba, but don't tell them. Don't tell, don't say anything. No. no, it's not true. It's commitment to a project. That's to let the church know that church, the money is now complete. If it's, if it's exactly the money we got, the thirty million era is now complete. It's complete. If you got more, church, we got thirty five million. God used the people. In fact, you gave three million instead of thirty million. Come and see it here. Verse six. And Moses gave commandment. You see? And they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp. There was an announcement in church. <laughs> Do you understand? Announcement time. So, so Tokwe comes to announce. Praise God! That, that, that kind of announcement, the announce, announcer is to be very happy. Because he has a good news to say. <laughs> Praise God! God has done so much for us in this church. Church, you see? Ha. Three months ago, we said we had to raise 30 million naira to buy this property. <laughs> now, we can't believe what God has done for us. God has helped us so much, we have raised 300 million. Praise God! The people shout! So, at this point, God has really helped us. We have even raised more than we need. So, please, pastor says, you should no longer give to us this project. Are you following me? We already have what we need even more than enough thank you don't give towards this project again do you understand what i'm trying to say do you get do you understand that's a beautiful church that's the way church is that's the way church should be should be are you hearing me so he said during after service make an announcement that the money is now complete he said and they come to be proclaimed throughout the camp saying let neither man nor woman <laughs> do you understand Make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. Hold it <laughs> You understand? He said, don't, 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 don't give again. He said, so what? So the people were restrained from bringing. Oh, friends, this is so powerful. I'll begin to open this scripture by God's business next week Sunday. You begin to see this very serious secret. What's in verse 7? For the stuff, can I say the stuff? I can't hear say the stuff. Say the stuff. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. How did they raise the money they needed for the church project? How did they raise it? Through the members. Did they write a letter to any big man? Ah, there's power in this scripture, friends. Amongst ourselves, we will raise more friends and we are going to buy properties. I'm telling you the truth. The way we raise money to buy mics, to buy this, to buy that, to buy, to buy this, we will raise money amongst us to do everything God has put in our heart. No letter to any big man. You'll be surprised. This is so serious. It means that before, this, before God commanded this offering, these resources were, were available. Are you following me? The people, you see, the man of God, even the people of God themselves might not be aware that they had even more than enough resources to build the sanctuary. For example, Pastor says, we want to build a church and it's one billion dollars. People are scared. You understand? People are scared. They are scared. Hey, one billion dollars. <laughs> How many are we? <laughs> I mean, now we just 500 of us. For one billion dollars. Where do you want to see it? But guys, the money is with you. It's in, your, it's in your midst. Are you hearing it? It's when we start giving it. 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 Whether it's for a year, whether it's for two years or three years. Are you following me? We now find out that actually, we even had SS. Are you following me? We had what? SS. I'm serious. Guys. All the money we need to achieve all the projects that God has put in our heart and that we put in our heart is where? Tell me where it is. Tell me where it is. I can't hear you. It's with us. It's in our church already. <laughs> this really gave me so much joy when I saw these scriptures. Chapter 25 and this, and this, and this chapter 36. Give me so much joy. Give me so much joy. Now it means we don't need to write any letter to any chairman. Are you following me? We don't need to write any letter to any superstar. We don't need to write any letter to any big man. 
Oh, friends, can you hear me? That all the money we need for the work is where? Is here. Is it okay? Where are the billions we need for the work of this church? Is here. It's right here. Are you following me? The billions of dollars we need for the work of this church. Where is it? Tell me where it is. It's right. It's, in, it's inside this church. You know that that church did not know that they, they had the money for the work. They didn't know. That's the way it is. So whenever a church wants to embark on a project, they are scared. For they don't know that they have the money in their midst. The money is dead. It's there. That's why we must never look at projects as mountains. Are you following me? We must see them as things we must do to accommodate God's glory. So we must set out to do it. See, when we set out, we'll find out that we have the resources and much more. Don't be afraid. So, so when I tell you that, guys, it's time to buy this property, we need 30 million euros. Don't be afraid, though. Where's the money? It's here. It's here. Can you say it's here? It's here. It's here. It's nowhere else. It's not anywhere. The money to do church work is with the church members. It's not with oh, it's not with the agent. It's not with one It's not with one allergy somewhere. It's when the church members don't have sense that God can now raise an allergy. Are you hearing me? But it is with the church members. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Praise God. Let me close. I've, I just used today to lay a foundation. Next week, by God's grace, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to chapter 25. That leads me to look at specific points from that verse 1 to 9, between verse 1 and 9. It's so powerful. We'll see how powerful our commitment offering is. But it, it excites, you know, it excites me so much, it excites me so much that all the money we need for church work is with us. It's excitement. You understand? It means that nobody can... Nobody can, can, what's that word? Nobody can, because I don't know if you want shako. Nobody can, it's not boast. There's a word. Give me the word now. You to speak the English. It's even more English I'm looking for. We are not at the mercy of any man. You understand? We are not what? We are not at the mercy of any man. We are not at the mercy of one allergy. We are not at the mercy of one chairman. You understand? We are not the mercy of one big man. We are not the mercy of one politician. Are you following me? All the resources we need for church work is with us. And even much more. Oh, friends, are you with me? He says, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work. Can you say for all the work? I can't hear you say all the work. All the work. Too much, guys. Is, is, it, is it not so exciting to you that all the money we need for church work is with us? That is not with an outsider. Are you following me? That is not with Olami Day. That said before he gives us, we have to play his church in song. His, his song in church. <laughs> Are you following me? That the money we need for church work is not with David Do. That is said before he gives us, we have to invite him, and he has to sit at the front. <laughs> Are you following me? That is not with it's not with portable. <laughs> that he will say before he gives up, we have to sing, we have to sing Sasuse in church. Emma Sasuse, Bujesu, Sasuse. <laughs> that if I'm gonna give you this money, you have to sing Sasuse. The choir has to render Sasuse in a worship manner. Sasuse for Jesus. Sasuse. <laughs> you know, you know they are, they, they are singing. On, on available in some churches as worship. They be those unavailable. Unavailable poverty. Unavailable. I'm unavailable. Nonsense. Madness. Are you hearing me, my friends? No oil. No oil. Dead people everywhere. Dead people handling the mic. Amongst all the all, amongst all the songs in heaven. Songs are finished. That even, even in my quiet time, I'll see that I can sing like three or no songs. Since the song I didn't plan for. And I'll say oh, unavailable. <laughs> Friends, are you hearing me? I thank God. I thank God. I thank God that the local church is not at the mercy of any man. 
Are you following me? I thank God that locally you don't want the message of one big man. I thank God. Are you following me? You know what this means? We can go ahead and do great things as we want. Hey, friends, you didn't hear me well. It means that what? We can go ahead and do great things as what as we want. We can go ahead and do anything. We can go ahead and buy the old street. We can go ahead and buy the old territory. Are you following me? We can go ahead and build anything. Because the money is here. Where is the money, my friends? Say the money is. Can you say it is here? I can't even say it is where. Say it is here. Say it's with me. I can't even say it's with me. It's with me, my friend. It's with me. It's with me. The money for church work is with me. It's with you. It's, it's not with Aliko Dangote. We now we now write later. Dear Halaji Aliko Dangote, we, we consider you as one of the elders of our church. <laughs> if I very soon we are planning to make you a deacon. We ask with, with so much with so much humility of heart. We write to you to please come to the help of our church. I want to buy a property, it's 40 million. We have only been able to raise 500,000 naira for the past five years. Please come to our rescue. We know that God will walk through your mighty hand to help this church of ours. Thank you so much, our dear brother in Christ. <laughs> he's not with him. Can you say he's not with him? Church money is where? Money for church work is where? He's with me. This is, so, this is so powerful. Money for church work is with us. See, even if it takes us five years to save it up, it is where? It's with us. If it takes us five years to save the 30 million era, it's with us. We'll save it. And if it takes us one month to save it, it's with us. Are you hearing me now, my friends? But we need to appreciate the fact that all the money we need for all the work of our church, all the work of our local assembly, is just right here with us. And not the exact money. Too much. And what? And too much. Can you say too much? Too much money. We have too much. I can't hear you say too much. Say too much. Say too much. Too much. And too much. Guys, you are not poor. Don't think of yourself poor. Please. Remove that mindset too. See, are you hearing my friend? Do what? Remove that mindset. That's why we are buying a microphone. Put your money. Let your money be part of it. Are you following me? Let your money be what? Be part of it. When we are buying bottled water, let your money be what? Be part of it. That is how, that is how we will know that the money will be part of the billion dollars project. If your money, cannot, if your money is not in, in the project of 5,000 naira, it's not in the project of 2,000, it's not in the project of 10,000, 100,000 naira. Friends, don't lie to yourself. It will never be in the project of 10 million. It will never be in the project of 1 billion. It won't be. Are you following me? Oh, but I thank my God. I thank my God so much that there's no minister I have. He's, he's, he's a minister of petroleum. There's no minister I have to go and prostrate to. That's sir, please help our church. Help this is I want to buy a drum set. Please help us. There's no local government chairman I have to go and beg. Are you following my friends? What do I need to do? Tell my members that now is the time to buy the keyboard. Are you following me? Now is the time to buy the properties. Now is the time to buy this. Now is the time to do that. And what do they do? They bring out the money. <laughs> they bring out the money. Are you, are you getting me? They, they bring out the 1,000. They bring out the 10,000. They bring out the 1 million. They bring out the money. All the money. Because inside the year, we have all the money we need for church work. And too much. It's too much. Friends, is, is the church not blessed? Talk to me, is the church not blessed? Is the church the church is so blessed that right inside here we have all the money we need for church work. I'll continue next week by God's grace. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.